When you make all the plans and commitments and you travel cross country to go off road with somebody and the weather isn't exactly what you bargained for, what do you do? In today's video, you will see some mistakes were made, but exploring the beautiful forests of West Virginia wasn't one of them. I know you want to come with me, buddy, but you can't. You gotta stay here and take care of your sister and your mom. Oh. We'll go all together as a everybody family wants, in a week. Everybody wants to see themselves on the screen. <laughs> We're all gonna go camping to get in, again together in a week, okay? You guys gotta. Hi, yeah, hi, Grandpa. <laughs> Your grandpa's not in there yet. <laughs> Once this video goes live, he will be. <laughs> you guys are gonna stay here with Grandma and Grandpa, okay? I'm gonna go make a video with a friend. All right, Dad. <laughs> We love you. We'll see you when you get back. We're smack dab in the middle of my family's cross country road trip. And for this little excursion, I'm gonna leave them at home. The weather is wild. I'm not sure that I'm going to a place that I'm gonna have success and it's just gonna be a whole lot easier. The wife and kiddos are safe and sound here at my grandparents' house. So I'm heading three hours west to West Virginia and meeting up with my friend John to go wheeling with him for the first time. Oh. Hello, Hello, gentlemen. Here we go. What's up, man? Awesome. Hey, Nate. Awesome. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. I'm here in sunny West Virginia with my friend John and my new friend Austin. Hey. And uh, we're going to go explore. I haven't been anywhere near here. You guys haven't explored this area at all, right? Not right here, no. Austin yeah, this pointed is... out a few places on the way down yeah. through that. But then. Relatively uncharted unchar territory. It looks on the map like there's a lot of places to go, little veins to go check out. And uh, we're hoping to camp. I think we're gonna camp. <laughs> I'm camping rain or shine. What about you? For sure. And I think he's coming up just to hang out for a little bit. Yes, let's go. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw hail today. We're headed out to explore and discover the Monongahela National Forest. This is 921,000 acres of public land, and although not all of it is accessible to the public, from what I can tell, it looks like there is plenty available so we can go out, explore this area, and find a great place to camp. As someone who lives in the Pacific Northwest, the first thing that I notice about West Virginia, and Virginia for that matter, is its lack of evergreen trees. This makes it feel like their rainforest is much more akin to a jungle or much more akin to something like Vietnam than what you would find where I live. The forest here is super dense, just like the Pacific Northwest, but because everything has leaves on it, it just has a completely different feel and a completely different look than what I'm used to. They say that variety is a spice of life, and I think there's no better way to experience that mantra more than traveling across the United States and seeing the wide variety of land this place has to offer. The day went on, the rain continued to fall, and the rain water started pouring down the hillsides. This is the cost to have a forest this beautiful. It takes a lot of water to water all these trees, and we're getting to experience firsthand why this place exists in the first place. 
the ambiance of this forest is incredible. The cloud cover makes it a lot darker outside, and then when you're in this thick tree canopy over your head, it makes it even darker on the forest floor. As we're working our way deeper into this forest, we know that these little streams could become much bigger streams, and could even turn into rivers behind us. So not only are there feelings of adventure from exploring a place we've never been before, but there's a feeling of survival, knowing that if it continues to rain like this, it might not be as easy to get out of this forest as it was to get in. It gets, it gets pretty overgrown and hairy back here. Yay! I'm proud of you. This trail is getting more overgrown, the ground is getting even soupier, and we're about to hit our first real obstacle. This this is what I had in mind when when we picked West Virginia, I was like, this is what you're hoping for? This is exactly what I was hoping for. It's, it's amazing, said. man. Oh. It's definitely up. Oh yeah? Because it's not eight feet down. Oh. <laughs> This little hill climb might not look like much, and to be completely honest, it really isn't. But when you've had this much water pouring down on top of you all day, you know that the ground is extremely soft and extremely saturated. During another time of the year when this trail is completely dry, you wouldn't even really need to stop and look at this. But a little change in weather conditions can completely transform an obstacle, especially one as steep as this. Was that all brakes? It was sliding that fast down? Yeah. Dude, that is slippery. That was 100% brakes. Wow, that is slippery, man. John continued to give this hill multiple attempts, but as you can see, every single time he hit it, it got worse and worse. So what we decided to do is pull John off out of the way, we'll let Austin try because he's definitely the lightest and the most nimble in the group, and then if he can make it to the top, we will follow suit. Oh no! No, dude. I could probably drive out of it. Well, John made a mistake that many of us that own 4x4s with a manual transmission have made. It was wedged good enough between two rocks that he didn't feel like he needed to shut it off and put it in gear, so he just let it run. Unfortunately, it took a six to eight foot drop off the side of this hill into the creek bed. But in all reality, this is the easiest way he could have learned this lesson. Many people make this mistake and don't have a vehicle to show for it afterward. I knew I should have shut it off. I was like, no, I'm up against rocks. You are not the first person to do this, so don't feel so bad. <laughs> I've seen this happen so many times. I was gonna so jump in, times. I'm like, nope. I, well, it that could be happened. so much Honestly, worse. That's not that bad. No, no I mean, it could be so much you said, worse. I hadn't even looked at this. You said it was eight foot down. I was like, no. I wasn't kidding. Well, what's the plan? Are, are we pulling? Are we pulling you back up? No, I think I got. Let's uh, let's let's see let's see if there's any damage first, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm worried about the front end. No, no, no. I just don't like the build the cut. Fortunately for John, after a quick inspection, we realized that there wasn't really anything wrong with his Cherokee. He tweaked a bracket for his sway bar a little bit, but that is pretty insignificant damage, especially knowing how bad this could be. So I've commandeered Nate's camera. This is John, who owns this yellow XJ, and I just 
noticed out of the corner of my eye that my vehicle with the parking brake set was uh, moving on its own. And it decided it wanted to go rock crawling in its creek bed. <laughs> so far, everything seems okay. You told it you were going overlanding. It told you you're going rock crawling. Bro, I'm built for rock crawling. Let's you're in the this. middle of a fight. It's uncomfortable for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> we decided the best way out is just going to be get it turned around and drive back down this creek because about a thousand yards back, this creek reconnects to the trail that we were on before we got to this hill climb. After getting John out of that creek bed, Austin and I both wanted to test out that hill that John couldn't quite make it up. This ended up being an excellent example of how weight affects your ability to climb because Austin walked right up and my very overweight Land Rover Discovery, not so lucky. It turns out the extra 3,000-ish pounds I had on Austin was pretty detrimental, but I think we could all see that coming. So close. Now that we've all had our fun, it's time to move on and actually find camp. Straighten up. for the rest of the day. One is to find camp, and two, we would like to find the highest point in the area. So we opened up our various navigation apps, we found a road that we think will take us there, and of course we had to have at least one more rainstorm move in to keep everything wet and soggy on the way up. I think the top of this is gonna be pretty fantastic. End of the road. Well, we made it. We did. We the did highest make. point in the whole area. What are we at? What? How many? What's the elevation? Forty-seven hundred feet. Forty-seven hundred feet. Yeah. But, out west, but doesn't look like good camping. But John and I found a spot that we think looks pretty dope down on the water. I think today is a perfect example of adventure gone right. Of course, we did have a little hiccup with John's Cherokee headed down the creek, but this is all part of the story. Usually you don't tell stories about the trips that go right. You tell stories about the trips that go wrong, or in this case, the trip that was the close call. But we discovered an area that we'd never been before. We grew closer as a team because of the adventure. And then we get to end our day in the middle of nowhere with great food, great people around a nice warm fire. I hope those of you that watch these videos and think to yourself, I wish that I could go do something like that, realize that the barrier for entry to do these kinds of things is extremely low. Get a group of people together that you like to spend time with, head out into the woods, and go to a place that none of you have ever been. Make sure you're prepared with lots of fuel, with the right gear, and with some good food. The point of these trips isn't the campsite, the point of these trips is the people you're with, the places you see, and the adventure that you didn't see coming along the way.